you so guys i want to ask you a very very serious question okay since i see that there are two big wigs from the egg industry and one super big wig from the broiler industry so let's start off with pradeep i want to ask you guys what's going to be the rate of chicken next week hopefully over 105 that's that's a good prediction that's a good prediction we hope so we hope it'll, it's going to it's going to be 105 and shoot up even more harsha you you want to say something about eggs you want me to guess the price yeah yeah uh, guess the price uh, let's lock it i'm hoping it stays as it is right now it's about 530 so as long as it doesn't drop i'm happy good okay so moving on to something more serious um we'll start off with you harsha so let's talk a little bit about inspiration okay uh, since you know you have you're a third generation entrepreneur now so i want to ask you who or what inspired you to join the poultry industry uh definitely my grandfather and my dad uh just poultry is what i've known since the time i've grown up spending time uh with my granddad a lot and my dad so they've been my biggest inspiration it's definitely in the blood it is definitely and i can see that harsha is very passionate about his business as well so that's a that's a very important and a very big deal uh especially when it comes to poultry pradeep uh so it's been about a year or so you're back in the business so i want to ask you what has been your perception of the industry so far and how do you envision poultry you know going forward in the future how do you envision the poultry industry for yourself for the future well i think significant changes have begun in the industry in terms of modernization creating an alternate distribution channel and uh, trying to brand our products further so i think in the future we will follow these and uh, hopefully have a better model in place thank you thank you that's a very good answer that's a very good answer sudhakar since you came into the business and you started branding your own eggs and you're servicing a metro city of hyderabad yes yes so i want to ask you a little bit about your retail strategy for the business and how is digital marketing playing into your game of things and you know how do you intend to use digital marketing going forward actually it's it's for it was my father's dream to brand an egg i think as a son i'm just uh, helping him in, in, in digital marketing i think we can use there is a so so much use in it we can use it definitely that's for sure Uh, i think but now i think we are only using it in a small portion of it but i think there is a huge potential to it yeah sure great and when you are when you actually do brand your own eggs and when they go in the market do you see any change do you see that you get more stable prices you get higher prices and you know what is your overall gut feel so far currently we are selling an egg for 20 rupees Wow. Wow, guys, did you hear that? Did you hear that? They are selling one egg for 20 rupees. 20 rupees. 20 rupees. We should all everybody we should give a round of big round of applause for that. Super. And can you tell us a little bit more that how the customer is willing to pay such a high price for one egg? Yeah. actually the customer has a huge uh, i believe a huge pocket mm, you see we, uh, we sell eggs in in a different manner uh, we enrich eggs with vitamins vitamin d3 uh, selenium vitamin e omega fatty acids people are getting aware of that uh, nutrition now i think we don't we just need to tell uh, we are just explaining it to them that our eggs are enriched that's it they are buying it so so guys i think there's a lesson to learn here and the lesson is that if we grow chicken in a very hygienic way 
and if we end up feeding the chicken with the right ingredients, a clean source of raw material that we can actually convey to the customer or to the consumer, I think the consumer appreciates that and is willing to pay a higher price for our product. Is that right? Right. I think that's a very valuable lesson that we've learned today. And thank you, thank you Sudhakar for that. Thank you very much. Over to you, Kranti. My job is done. <laughs> Don't run away. So yeah, uh, we just wanted to know like, with hatcheries coming in, what's your perspective of three and that you, you entered in during the COVID season? I mean, when we entered, like obviously the industry was in a very tumultuous time. So it's been very difficult to sell our checks. We've sold checks at rates when it was like eight rupees as well, when we were producing 23, 24, and depending on the feed cost, it can go even higher. So it has been a very difficult time, but we re realized that like diversifying our pro product portfolio has really helped uh, soothe in the losses a lot. And we're hoping that even in the future, like we can delve even more into other specific areas in the poultry industry and see if we can uh, put not put all not not put all our eggs in one basket, but put it in a, a different baskets. So that's helped a lot. And obviously now 39 rupees for the last month, it's been a lot more stable and it's been helping a lot. Right. And uh, Pranit, don't hand over the mic. Yes. So you have this. Okay. I was Pranit. That question is still for you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You're coming back from an international experience. Yes. So how is it working here with the farmers in your own company? How are you planning to bring down that experience I mean, to it's it? It's definitely very different because when I worked abroad, it's all about fast paced, get work done as soon as possible. Like it's all goals, goals, goals. But here I realized that in the past two years since my granddad asked me to come back and join the business. I realized it's a lot more relationship-based business and it's pertinent that we spend the time with the farmers. So we'll go to the grassroots level, understand their problems and see what we can do to help them even further. And that's something which my granddad has done all his life and hopefully we can live up to that legacy and keep it moving forward as well. Definitely not an eight to five job. Yes. So, Pranit, I also want to tell you a fun fact. I see that you went to Indiana University. Yes. You know who's your alumnus? Me. Yeah. I went to Indiana <laughs> as well. We're awesome. from the same school. I went to Kelly School. Yes, yes, yeah. So, oh, we're that's alumnus. awesome, yeah. So that's, we need a high five there. Okay. Bharat. How do you envision poultry for your future and the future for your company? So I actually believe for a breeding company in the present situation they probably need to vertically integrate because chick selling is not going to work in future. You probably have to have your own broiler farm and then you have to own your processing unit. Then only it's going to work because the independent farmers are joining with the contract farming. So you probably have to vertically integrate. Good luck with that. Moving on, we also have the third generation, Mr. Shubham Raj Singh. Uh, he, believes in, he believes in hard work is a key to success with the knowledge being the guiding force. He has always been very enthusiastic about machines. I always used to see him in the show. He's not going to school during these days. Uh, he's put his actions together by achieving a mechanical engineering distinction from CBIT. He's now joined his grandfather and father, Mr. Vijay Rajji and Uday Singh. Being the third generation, he aims to take his family business to new heights with innovation research and automation in the poultry in field. Now, during the pandemic, he's been working. That's nice. He's worked on H-frame uh, structures and th uh, 3D model simulations. And we all have a football player also here. He's a he's highly driven football player for the Telangana State football team and he's also represented the Indian national football team. A big hand, hand of applause. And we have Varun Dopeshwar, 
he wears many hats. He's a dancer, choreographer, performing artist, teacher, filmmaker, poet, juggler, and a TEDx speaker. Now we know whom to call on to next year for speaker. I, I know, I think I should just have, no, I'll have him perform something. <laughs> While he dabbles in multiple mediums of creativity in his personal life, professionally speaking, he's a third generation again, entrepreneur, the marketing director of Dopeshwar Engineering, a pioneer in manufacturing and fabricating equipment for the chemical, agricultural and the poultry sector in India. So yeah, who's going to perform? Football or juggling or dance or filmmaking? Football. <laughs> so Shubham, your ambitions for yourself, for your company, for your grandfather. Yeah, so I've actually grown up in this industry like you know and uh, I've seen how my grandfather was in the industry and then dad taking over from him. And then that instills uh, a lot of uh, far-sighted vision in me to take this company to a next level because there is a lot of scope for the R&D in the manufacturing sector. So that is my aim as of now. Yeah, we want you to increase your volumes. And how many equipments are you planning to sell for the next 20 years? Let's just, let's just keep that a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Varun, same question for you, your ambitions. And how do you want to balance your work life with all your passionate works? Hello? Am I audible? Yeah, this is good. I think, yeah, okay. Your drums will be more audible. Okay. Uh, how I dabble in multiple mediums? I think I have decent time management skills. I don't think there's any more credit to be given to that. Um, as far as my ambitions go, um, I don't know how many of you uh, remember, but in the last uh, Poultry India when it happened, uh, there was an IBJA ceremony and my dad was awarded the Poultry Impact Award for his multiple innovations that he's come up with in the sector. And I truly believe the infinite potential that this sector has, especially in the waste management category, and someone who markets uh, technologies and machinery in this sector, I think the main thing that we're strugg struggling with is uh, when you take any subject matter and uh, you're not able to convince people of the intrinsic value it has, they will see it as a nuisance. And any money that goes into it, they'll see it as an expense. But if you're able to convince them of the intrinsic value that it carries and change the perception of that nuisance into an opportunity, then they'll see it in, as an investment. So it's primarily that's what I'm trying to do because the technologies are available to us. We have access to some of the best in-class minds in this industry. You've seen how the industry has progressed over the last few decades. It's just a matter of perception and I think that's the role I'm playing in this. Nice, awesome. So here goes your act. And two, and three, oh. and start the juggling. Oh, oh I, <laughs> I, know, I, I can... Like. I can only juggle with uh, uh, tennis balls. I can't juggle with uh, bottles and pins, unfortunately. But hopefully, someday. Okay. <laughs> or want to dance for us? Uh, I don't think people That's would okay. be interested. That's okay. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> okay. So, let's welcome all of them. And thank you for having, uh, giving us your precious time. I just, wanna, I, just, I just want to make a quick closing note. And... So I, I want to share my experience when I came into the industry. There's two things that I really like about this industry. The first thing is when you come into this industry, I found that the people are very rooted, they're very welcoming, and they're very warm. So you kind of feel like you're in this big family and in this big community. And it's really nice. It's a really nice feeling to have, especially in business. So that's one thing I really enjoy about this business. And this is for all the other young people out there as well. The second thing that I really like about this business is that it's a very, very growing business. 
uh, and it's going to stay like that for the next 15, 20 years at least. In India, there is a huge deficit and a huge opportunity for us where we can make a good quality, affordable source of protein available to the masses. And that's the beauty of our industry. Our product is such that we can make available to the masses a very good and clean source of protein. And I think with all the super education that you guys come from and all the great exposure that you come from, it's up to you guys to take it forward and, you know, show the industry, show the consumer, you know, what exactly our product is all about. So I wa once again, I want to welcome you all on board and I want to wish you uh, super luck. I want to wish you super success and I'm sure you, you'll, you're going to find so many mentors whenever you need them. And all the best to you and we look forward to you being here again in the next 10 years and telling us your interesting, interesting stories. So welcome. Let's have a big, big round of applause for these young entrepreneurs. And let's do our bit, let's support them, let's encourage them, and let's take this industry forward. Thank you so much for being here, guys, and thank you all, thanks to all of you and all the delegates here.